everyone, and welcome to Sunburned Albino. Play some more um, Ace Miles Edgeworth Attorney Investigations. Save. Cleared stage. Yes, okay. Episode, um, 15. 15? Right on the heels of the last episode. Let's keep it going. Got a new, uh, episode to go through, and it seems like it's gonna be pretty interesting. Although, if we're having to deal with Kay as a child right now, dude, I hate children voices. I hate doing them. Dude, don't give me another Pearl Fay. Please. Kay Faraday, the young lady who calls herself the second Yatagras. The piece of cloth that she conjured up has taken me back to many years ago. Seven years earlier. Oh my god, we're in an actual courtroom. Yeah, that's right! I did it! I killed the guy! But it was the great thief Yatagras that told me to do it! I ask the defendant, just what exactly are you trying to say? Don't you got it? I know the true identity of the Yatagras! The Yatagras is the man standing over there at the prosecutor's bench! Are you saying that I'm the Yatagras? Don't you dare deny it! You told me to kill him when you snuck into the embassy! Are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the Yatagras? That's exactly what I'm saying! Mr. Rail, I think we've had just about enough out of you! Your Honor, please listen to me, I'm telling the truth! You've gotta believe me! All right, whoever the hell any of those people are. <gasps> the judge! Hmm. In accordance with the defendant's accusation, a new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Faraday. This court will be in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. Ooh, Mr. Faraday. Oh! Kay's daddy! Kay's daddy was a prosecutor? Oh my god, what? It's almost time for me to enter the courtroom. And so it is that my first assignment as a prosecutor will be... Yeah, he's younger, so I gotta do a little lighter of a voice for him. As a replacement for a prosecutor who has been accused by the defendant. Edgeworth! Who dat? Sir. Oh, that's right. We made you British in the last thing, even though you were definitely German. But, like, that that's fine. We'll, we'll have to continue it. Have you read over all the documents regarding this trial? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything there is to know. Very good. The paperwork for the prosecutor substitution is just about complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as your mentor, I, Manfred von Karma, will accept nothing short of perfection. I understand, sir. To have the chance to stand in court at such an early stage in my career, I am honored and proud. As I have watched over your studies, I am giving you this very rare chance. Prove yourself. Crush the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion. Yes, sir. That such a legendary prosecutor is watching over and judging my performance, I have to be perfect in every way. Hell yeah. Let's talk to him. Today's trial should have ended in just one minute. Because the defendant was picked up by the security camera, correct? Exactly. The killer had the gall to say that he had only killed because he was instructed to do so. Even more outrageous is his claim that the case prosecutor, Byrne Faraday, gave the order. Ha! Ah, Faraday's such a fool. He's been cornered by his very own prey. Sir, are you an acquaintance of Mr. Byrne Faraday? Hmph! <laughs> He's a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Nonsense? He once tried to explain to me a way of punishing those who cannot be brought to court. Those who cannot be brought to court? That is nonsense, for no man is above the law. Well, there are always a few exceptions. However, there is no reason to even deal with such individuals. 
A prosecutor is a guardian of the court, one with no obligation to outside martyrs. Thus, there is no reason to deal with such individuals. I see. Edgeworth, disgracing yourself as Faraday has will not be forgiven. Have no fear. I will not let you down, sir. In place of the accused prosecutor Byrne Faraday, I'll prove the defendant's guilt. Very good. I've secured an hour of recess for you to prepare to do just that. Show them all the power of Von Karma. So, have you achieved a firm understanding of the case? Yes, sir. I have memorized everything that is written down in the case files. Well then, explain the case to me. I want to see if you really know what you're talking about. Understood. A murder was committed on September 8th in front of the Codopian Embassy. The victim, Mr. D... Mr. Dead Man! Are you fucking kidding me? The victim, Mr. Dead Man, was a staff member at the Embassy. The defendant in this case, Mr. Mackrell, was held for questioning the night of the incident as he was deemed suspicious. He was quickly placed under arrested... Under arrested! For possession of the murder weapon, a gun. Furthermore, at the time of the murder, the great thief Yatagras had successfully infiltrated the Koropian embassy as well. At first, Rel claimed that he himself was the Yatagras, but that he did not kill dead man. I wonder what he expected to gain from such a desperate lie. It's possible that he wants to go down while in the spotlight if he is found guilty. There truly is no limit to people's inanity. But I digress. Continue, Edgeworth. Yes, sir. During the trial, the prosecution presented the security footage that captured the murder. The footage clearly showed Mr. Rell as the murderer. The act of Mr. Rell firing the gun could be clearly seen from the visitor's gallery. Upon seeing, upon seeing that, the defendant retracted his statement and admitted to the murder. I did it because I was told to. By the real Yatagras, Burn Faraday. Hmm. That sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing. While this may appear to simply be the murder of a Kadopian Embassy staff member, people are actually referring to it as the second KG-8 incident. The second KG-8 incident? I'm very sorry, sir. I fear I failed to study hard enough. Hmm. Huh. Well, even among the police, it's information that only a select few are privy to. Could you please enlighten me, sir? Sir, what do you mean by the second KG-8 incident? In order for me to tell you that, you must first learn about the original case. Take a look at these documents. This is a three-year-old newspaper. You have heard of the Amano Group scandal before, correct? Yes, I have. The secretary of Ernest Amano, the Amano Group's director, was arrested. Under suspicion of smuggling. Correct. CCU was an employee of the Yamano Group, and the sole witness to the smuggling operation. It was she who brought the crime to light. However, Miss Yu was silenced before she could testify in court. Wasn't a Kadopian Embassy staff member arrested for the murder? Yes, a Kadopian by the name of Manny Cochin was the, sus was the suspect. Manny Cochin. Manny Cochin. I'm trying to think of what the pun is there. Manny coaching. I don't know. However, due to lack of evidence, the case went unresolved. Lack of evidence? Ha! If only I was in charge of the case, I would have done everything in my power to prove his guilt. To make sure that all criminals are found guilty, my mentor really is dedicated. Faraday was the prosecutor on the case then, and he was as pathetic as ever. Mr. Faraday was in charge of the KG-8 incident as well? That's right. And now, once again, the victim of the case you are currently assigned to was someone who was scheduled to testify against that smuggling organization. And just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was to testify. You're catching on. The victim was murdered just before his day in court against the smuggling organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way as they did in the KG-8 incident. So that's why it is being called the second KG-8 incident? Yes. 
Yet there is one difference between the two incidents. What would that be? The so-called noble thief that is sending everyone into an uproar. The great thief Yata Garas. Yata Garas? I'd better find out more. Damn, let's just talk to you for 45 minutes, huh? If it is true that the Yatagras showed up at the Kodopian Embassy, what could he or she have been after? Hmm. No doubt to steal any suspicious accounting records and release them publicly. Or more likely to steal secrets from the Kodopian Embassy itself, since the item that the Yatagras stole from there was sent to the police. What was it that the Yatagras sent to the police? I don't know the details. Anything related to the Yatagaras is getting the top secret treatment. Still, I find it very ironic. By returning the stolen item to the police, it was proved positive that the Yatagaras had infiltrated the embassy on the same day the staff member was killed. Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? That would have to be the first time the Yatagaras has left evidence behind, correct? Yes, indeed. If you wish to learn more about the Yatagaras, then I suggest you ask Faraday. Mr. Faraday? He happens to be the prosecutor in charge of the Yatagaras case as well. He's the prosecutor in charge of both the KG-8 incident and the Yatagaras case? Mr. Faraday really has a lot on his plate. What is it, little girl? You're scary, mister! Did you need something? Um, I want to trade these coins with you. A fistful of dimes, quarters, and pennies, but it looks like you've exactly a dollar. Is this what you want? Thanks! That's exactly what I needed! Could that child be here to watch the trial? How disrespectful for a child like that to be running around inside the courthouse! Does no one have respect for this country's judicial system anymore? The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is complete! Why, you? Do you even know how much time there is left before the trial resumes? I... I'm so sorry! I can have you mopping up this courthouse instead of protecting it in an instant! The go... It's no bother, sir. Not being completely prepared could prove to be a perfect handicap for me. Hm. A proud one you are. You had better collect the evidence from Faraday and prepare yourself. It's time for your debut, Edgeworth. Well, I didn't get a chance to talk to anybody else. Wow. Ooh, we're actually in a courtroom. But there's no judge anywhere. Just what is going on? Why isn't Faraday here yet? How is it possible that the defense is not prepared yet either? Bailiff, where is Mr. Faraday? I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. Aha. Ah, you must be the one Mr. Von Karma recommended. I hear this will be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. Sir, it looks like the trial is about to resume, however... Yes, it will be all but impossible to prove the witness a liar without the evidence from Faraday. What is that blasted buffoon up to? It's an emergency, sirs! Oh, it's you. Silence! There shall be no yelling in this sacred hall of law! Bailiff, remove that man from this courtroom at once! B please Wait! You have to listen to me! There's an emergency! Defendant lobby number two! M Mr. Faraday and the defendant! The two of them! They're... They're both dead, your honor! Wh 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 what? Stay back! 
Uh. Oh, who's that? Oh, I thought that was Lang, but it's not. No one's allowed in the crime scene, period. Just who does this oddball think he is? This is becoming quite the hot spot. Isn't she Mr. Rell's defense attorney? Hey, hey, you! No running in the hallway, pal! And who are you to tell me what to do? I'll never find out what's going on like this. It's time for some civil discourse. And you are... H who, me? Hey, pal. It's common courtesy to tell someone your name first before asking theirs. <sighs> Point taken. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a district prosecutor. A prosecutor? I've never seen a prosecutor as young as you, pal. I've told you my name, now would you mind telling me yours? Detective Dick Gumshoe, and just recently I achieved my dream of becoming a detective. More than a dream, it's what I was born to do. Wait, maybe I should check and make sure I'm not really in some crazy dream first. This detective is entirely too excited to be at a murder scene. So Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know that I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that, but it would behoove you to fill me in on what you know. Wow, you're a proud one for such a youngster, aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Bad is the one in charge. Just, uh, yeah, okay. So you're just gonna have to ask him for all the details, okay? As for me, I was guarding the door to defendant lobby number two. Hmm, so you were the guard detail. Did you notice anything strange while you were on duty? Well, I freaked out when I heard a gunshot and then I kind of froze. You're a detective and a measly gunshot scared you that much? Then again, I can hardly claim to not know what it's like to hear one at close range. Then Detective Bad came running to the scene. We went into lobby number two together and both men were lying there dead. Is that everything? Hmm. Yeah, that's it. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. Interesting. Other than the gunshot, he didn't hear a single sound of commotion. Alrighty then. Do you have a minute? You know, I'm not really into talking to people I don't know. Especially at a time like this. Ah, I apologize for not introducing myself before bothering you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I was to take Mr. Faraday's place in court. Edgeworth, huh? Never heard of you. So Faraday's substitute is a newbie, huh? I'll have you know, madam, that I studied under Manfred von Karma. See, I can do the finger wag as well. <laughs> do not take me for some naive novice. Hmm. <laughs> do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> So you're a student of Von Karma. I should have... <laughs> Those clothes are a dead giveaway. Stop right there. These are the garments of one who gallantly presents the facts. <laughs> ah, thanks for the great laugh. But try not to make me laugh so much, okay? I wasn't trying to do anything of the sort. <laughs> just kidding. I was just goofing around. By the way, do you know who I am? My name is Callisto Yu. And if you're telling the truth... Then we were about to go head to head in court. Ah, but of course. I have heard much about you, Mrs. Y or Miss You. <laughs> ah, but of course. I have heard much about you. <laughs> You're a regular Shakespeare. Did I say something funny? I'd like you to update me on this situation. I don't really know anything. Why don't you try talking to those detectives over there? If that's the case, then why are you here? <laughs> Ugh, what's so funny? It's just that the way you speak is so tactless. The person I was going against in court until only a little while ago was just murdered. It's not like I could go back into the courtroom pretending as though nothing happened. That's a good point. I apologize for asking such an insensitive question. It's fine. Don't worry about it. All right, then. Excuse me, but who are you? Detective Tyrell Bad, homicide. I was informed of the situation and came as quickly as possible. 
So how did you arrive and inspect the body before me? Faraday requested for me to testify in the trial. Plain and simple. Mr. Faraday requested that you be here? I've already contacted HQ about the situation. I've got nothing to say to you, kid. K kid I'm Mr. Faraday's substitute in today's trial. Therefore, I insist that you update me on the situation. I can't back down here. I have a right to know. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about how to talk to adults, kid? Is he threatening me? I is he going for his gun? I it's just a mirror. How dare he trick me like that? Faraday was stabbed to death with some kind of blade, and he had a gun in his hand. The other man, a Mr. Mac Rell, was shot and killed. He was found holding a bloody knife in his hand. Was there anyone else who went into defendant lobby number two? Yeah, that big lug over there. His name's Gumshoe. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then they must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impotence! This guy is really testing my patience. Why was I not informed that you were going to testify in court? Homicides aren't my only gig. The Yatagras case is also one of my assignments. Hmm. So you were called upon to comment on the Yatagras' characteristics, in order to assess if Mr. Faraday really was the Yatagras or not? Well, well. Looks like you just might have a brain after all in that head of yours, son. Son? I'm not your son, Pops! Miss You! There is someone here who wishes to see you! Who is it? A Kadopian Embassy staff member by the name of Manny Cochin! What? What's going on? Detective Bad and Miss You's moods just changed all of a sudden. Wait a second, wasn't Manny Cochin? I'll be right there. It's nice to see- oh. Well, let's see, what would his voice be like? Uh, we'll figure it out if I get like a better look at his face. It's nice to see you again, Miss Yu. Why are you here? I have no desire to ever see you again. No, no. Actually, would you mind stepping outside for a brief chat? Fine, let's go. Okay, I sort of figured it out. Oh, come on, he leaves and I just figured out what his voice was with like the last two words of that sentence. Uh, I'm gonna forget by the time he shows up again. Bad. Von Karma, it's been a long time. I knew you would show up. You usually do when the Yatagras is involved and I see this case is no exception. Do you know Detective Bad, sir? Yes, he's like an old bloodhound that never leaves the scene of a crime. If only he would get a promotion and move on. It's the crime scene where a detective is most useful and effective. Hmm, it's not like I don't know that. Moving on though, bad. The man that I just passed by. Was he not the suspect from the KG-8 incident? So I was right. Just what is that man doing wandering around here? That Faraday. I can't believe he let such an easy catch get away, imbecile! I would have proved his guilt in three minutes! Von Karma, I think you've said enough for now. It's in poor taste to speak like that about the departed. Hm, <laughs> very well. Back on topic, I'm placing Edgeworth in charge of the investigation here. Ooh! It's a young... Papa, how could you place him in charge? Francisca, what are you doing here? Let's see. I'm here for summer vacation, what else? But like higher than that. I'm here for summer vacation, what else? Francisca von Karma, so she is here on vacation from Germany. She is the daughter of Manfred von Karma and a student of his who's also junior to me. You're the one who's junior to me, and don't you forget it. You're not conveniently avoiding the bar examination, are you? Ha! If you were able to pass, then I'll have absolutely no trouble at all! I'll never allow myself to lose to you! Never! Why does she always have to be this competitive? 
Anyway, Papa, are you really assigning Miles Edgeverse to cover the case? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Well, you know, I'm close to becoming a prosecutor myself. And I am 100% confident that I can do a better job than him. Why do they dress the younger versions of them more provocatively? Like, Kay Faraday was like a 10-year-old kid or whatever, and she was wearing like a midriff thing, like up here with the belly and everything. And now Manfred von Karma's like complete, or not Manfred, <laughs> uh, what's her name? Francisca's like completely sleeveless and like, you know, just like rocking out with the guns, you know what I mean? That's just like Francisca. She has no problem bad-mouthing someone right in front of them. Bad. Yeah. These two will be conducting the investigation. What? You want me to let both of these kids loose on the crime scene? Nah, er, tch. ha. This is a perfect opportunity for them to work on their prosecutorial skills. A crime scene is not a place for children to be messing around in. I'm the one with the authority over this crime scene, bad. And I will not tolerate complaining. <sighs> Edgeworth. Francisca, I leave this case to the two of you. Understood, sir. Yes, Papa. I'll go take care of the paperwork now. Remember, I'll accept nothing but a perfect report from the both of you. Do not disappoint me. Hold up, Von Karma. I still haven't agreed to this. Dude, that Detective Bad Goot is like the coolest person I've ever seen in an anime. <laughs> like just just his like design and stuff, like the way he looks. He looks like a Dragon Ball Z character who is a detective. Like he looks like fucking Deborah, but like a human being. It's been quite some time, Francisca. This will be the perfect chance for us to see which of us is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. Would it kill you to at least say hello? Um, long time no see. Very good. Just because you became a prosecutor first doesn't mean you can act all proud. Sh she hasn't changed a bit. Miles Edgeworth, as I was saying, we shall see which one of us is worthy of the Bon Karma name. Bon Karma name. For crying out loud, I've been reduced to a babysitter. It looks like Mr. Von Karma was successful in convincing the detective. That's just like him. He never fails. Now, I'd appreciate it if you could quickly run me through the facts, Detective Bad. You're better off checking things out on your own. Very well. Seems like getting help from Detective Bad will be a most arduous task. Is the only real explanation that they killed each other simultaneously? Miles Edgeworth, you should listen to someone until they are finished talking! Um, what are you talking about? I'll only say it one more time. This is a competition to see who is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. A competition? The person that figures out the truth first wins. Hmm. So the person who doesn't discover the truth is a dishonor to the name? Exactly! I don't care that you became a prosecutor before me. I simply refuse to hear any more foolish things come from your foolishly foolish mouth! Hmm. Fine. Whatever makes you happy. Can I take that as you accepting my challenge? Once again, whatever makes you happy. Ha! Well then, let's begin the investigation, shall we? I'm going to find the perfect evidence and prettily present it like the professional I am! Competing to discover the truth behind a crime. How delightfully childish. You kids over here, now. Kid? Ha! Serves you right, Miles. He just called you a kid. I said kids, kid. H how dare you call me a kid as well? I'll do what I please, and I won't allow you to cause a ruckus on my crime scene. Hey, big guy. You're gonna watch over these two. Yes, sir. Detective Bad, sir. Now, do what I say from now on, kids, okay? You'd better not get in our way, Scruffy. You'll feel the bite of my whip if you do. 
Eek! Th then you, prosecutor boy. Let's get your investigation started already, all right? Great, now even that detective is treating me like a child. All right, it's time to get investigating. Get a move on, prosecutor boy. My name is Miles Edgeworth, and if you were to call me prosecutor boy one more time, it will be my duty as a prosecutor to look into your monthly salary. What? And what would you do with my salary after you saw how much it was? That's up to you now, isn't it? Really? Sounds good, pal. He's so naive. Detective Bad, may I have a word with you? What is it? It appears that both a knife and a gun were used as murder weapons. Yeah, it does. That leads us to our first question of the investigation. Where did the men acquire the weapons? The gun was inside of Faraday's bag. It was a piece of evidence that was presented in the trial earlier today. It was used to kill the Kadopian Embassy staff member. But I never heard anything about the knife. Mr. Rell was being held by the police. There's no way he could have brought it in. Which means it's possible that Faraday had the knife on him from the start as well. Could it have been a piece of evidence that had yet to be presented? But then, why doesn't Detective Bad know about it? Wait, what if... It's possible that Mr. Faraday brought the knife in under the guise of prosecutorial evidence. He could have then brought it out and attacked Mr. Rell with it. Huh. Maybe you've got a brain in there after all, kid. Yeah. Is he going to treat me like a child forever? It looks like Mr. Faraday attacked Mr. Rell first, who then counterattacked. That's the only logical conclusion you can draw from a scene like this. Hmm. Not yet. I feel that it's much too early to be drawing conclusions already. I must first find conclusive evidence so as to ensure the honor of the Von Karma name. What's on TV? Whoa! Wh wh what is it, Detective Gumshoe? My TV at home is so tiny compared to this one, pal. Then perhaps you should purchase a more normal-sized television like this one. Oh, let me see here. Wow, this thing is huge! Ah! And way too noisy! Yours are noisy, Von Scruffy! Don't touch it. You'll get your fingerprints all over it. B but I didn't touch it. Preservation of the crime scene is the foundation of detective work. The foundation, huh? Sounds like something the rookie here needs to shore up on. Oh yeah, they just leave the TV on. What's in the bag? There's some, there's some stuff in the bag, pal. I suppose this was Mr. Faraday's bag. It's probably the trial evidence I was supposed to collect from him. This is uh, the evidence? Ah, I'd better not touch it. I'll leave prints on it. Do you just not pay attention to anything you do? <laughs> there are some plastic bags stacked up on the table. There's a tea set too, but there doesn't seem to be any sign of a disturbance. Yeah, the table's all neat and tidy. Maybe they were super quiet in their scuffle? After all, I didn't hear anything from out in the hallway, you know. Maybe the plastic bags scattered on the floor throwing us off. There are some plastic bags stacked up on the t Okay, the same stuff. Same stuff, same stuff, same stuff. All right, same stuff, I get it. All right. This plant. This decorative plant's foliage is quite nice. It's actually soothing to be around it. Hmm, perhaps I should purchase one for my room. Hmm, why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Those bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal. I know that much, detective. You sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Normally, I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but when it's this guy... Anyway, could these plastic bags be evidence of a fight between the two men? But there was no scuffle. Hmm, well, still plastic bag stuff, okay. All right, all right, okay. Let's see what we got going on. Still gotta talk to people. Let's talk to, uh, talk to, uh, Detective Bad. Detective Bad, do you have any thoughts on the case? Faraday and Rell. Looks like they killed each other to me. Although, 
There are a few things that just don't seem right. Hmm. And what would they be? Hmm. <laughs> Why don't you try thinking on your own first before you bother me, boy? What? Now I've been downgraded to just boy? Ah, I see. Did you figure something out? This is a competition, Miles, and as such, I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk to me. <sighs> as you wish. It looks like Mr. Faraday fell on top of Mr. Rell. At first glance, it seems like they must have killed each other. However, using logic, the only logical conclusion is... Aha! W what was that outburst for? My detective's instinct just hit me real hard. It was Mr. Rell that fell first, see? You don't need a detective's instinct for that, it's common sense. But I suppose we won't know much more than that until after I examine the bodies. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook of cranny. <laughs> hmm, why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Those bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal. I know that much, y'all. Yeah, just have the same. Same conversation. Same conversation, okay. Looks like Mr. Faraday died while holding the gun in his right hand. So he shot Mr. Rell and then fell on top of him while still gripping onto the gun? I guess that does seem kind of strange, huh? I mean, why would Mr. Faraday know how to fire a gun? It's not exactly rocket science, even I know how to pull a trigger. Although I doubt I'll ever need to use one. I hope I'll never have to fire a gun either, pal. But it sure does look cool to hold a gun in your hands. It appears that the police's screening procedures need a thorough review. Anyway, I should jot down some notes about the handgun in Mr. Faraday's hand. Is he wearing like a scarf or something? Mr. Faraday, how ironic it is for him to lose his life in a courthouse. Yeah, why did it have to be like this? I don't know what to say. I can't believe this happened while I was on watch, pal. Rather than beating yourself up, you should spend your time continuing the investigation. Didn't you become a detective in order to solve crimes? Yeah. Then get back to work. Find out the cause of his murder. Right, I'm on it, pal. Looks like Mr. Rell. Oh, looks like Mr. Rell died with the knife in his hand. There, there's some blood stuck on it. Then he must have used this as a weapon. Yep, no doubt about it. Was Mr. Faraday carrying this on his personage? Did he bring this as a piece of evidence for the trial, or did he bring it with a very different intention in mind? I should. <coughs> Excuse me. I should jot some notes down about it. All right, knife data. I mean, if that was evidence. But the detective's saying he didn't see it before, so maybe it's not evidence. But if it was evidence, then we could, uh, be saying that, like, I don't know. Like, do we know? Like, they fell on top of each other. I don't see any wounds. Like, we can't see the wounds. We have to look at them. First, he killed a Kadopian Embassy staff member. Then he was murdered himself. This guy wasn't exact. This guy wasn't exactly an angel, you know? Oh, what makes you say that? Well, he's been hauled into the precinct several times for theft and assault, pal. So yeah, he's definitely the type to have committed a murder or two. Well, he did admit to killing Mr. Deadman. Hey, good point, pal. I knew my detective's intuition was telling me something. Detective's intuition? Yep, you know about it? It's a special feeling that all detect- We don't have time for this conversation right now. Let's return to the investigation. I don't see anything else to examine here. Is there something up his ass? Yeah, okay. Let's uh, go back. We must have some logic. I mean, we've talked to everybody we can talk to here. Neat and tidy table, plastic bags strewn about. These are contradictory, which means I'm not sure they might be connected, but... Okay, cool. There is a very tidy pile of plastic bags on the table, and yet a portion of them wound up scattered on the floor as well. It's not likely that the ones on the floor were knocked over during a struggle, in which case might there be not be another explanation as to how they got there? Um, another reason? 
I believe it's possible that the blood on the outside of the bag is related somehow. Eeh, please get that blood away from me, pal. Detective Gumshoe, whose blood is on this bag? Um, hold on, let me ask the lab guy. All right, please hurry. Wait till you get a load of this, pal. It's Mr. Faraday's. Oh, and the technician said they didn't find anything else on or in the bag either. Hmm. It would appear that this bag is a very important piece of evidence. Okay, if you say so, I leave it in your hands, pal. All right. Well, now we've got to start looking at what we've got accrued here. Incident overview. Sam Aramay, coach him, found not guilty, okay. Detective Gumshoe's testimony, didn't hear a sign of a struggle. Handgun, was found in his hand. It's Faraday's evidence from the embassy staff killing case. A knife, I believe Faraday brought this as evidence. It was found in Rel's hand. Plastic bag, one of the bags strewn on the floor of Lavender 2 has Faraday's blood on it, but nothing in it. This blood here is from Mr. Faraday, but there are no other clues to be found. Which begs the question, do I need to put this bag inside another bag in order to preserve it as evidence? Ha ha ha! Good question. Hmm. Well, then we're not going to get anything from that. We're not gonna get anything from anything. Hmm. Open window, aha! The window is open and huh, there's a fresh flowery scent in the air. Ah, the flowers in the garden down there are so gross and ghastly. Do you think maybe you could try offering something useful for a change? Well, at least there's no way someone escaped through this window, pal. They wouldn't wake up and smell the flowers after a fall from the third floor. Are you willfully ignoring the fact that there are also iron bars on the windows? Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I guess there's that too. Either way, no one could get through these windows, right? They thought of everything when they were designing this courthouse. Very nice. No one can get through the windows. Smell of flowers. There's nothing else to examine, though. Some stuff in the bag. Then why don't you let me look at what it is? Please? Do we need to talk to, like, the coroner person? He's, like, trapped over here. I can't get to him. Hmm. Hmm. That's the only piece of logic we have. Uh, which means that there's probably a piece of evidence that we have not fully scanned. But like, it won't let me check this thing. Why won't it let me check either of these things? Maybe we need to examine the scene again. Oh, yep, apparently not. Or apparently we missed some. Aha! His hand is all black down here, see? I wonder what it could be. Wait, it is? What? I don't see any blackness. Hmm, if you look closely, this blotching pattern resembles an ink stain. Oh, I just I just thought that was like the shadow under his hand. Interesting. Okay. I would not think that would have anything to do with the window. An ink stain? Yes, I usually get ink on my own hand when I use my feather pen. A feather pen? I've never seen one before. Sure you aren't just making it up, pal? Mr. Rell's cause of death was from being shot, correct? That's what we think, but it's hard to tell with him lying face down. Death is bad enough, but it's truly lamentable that someone would try to hide the truth. Um, are you sure they were trying to hide something? I can't confirm Mr. Rell's cause of death with his body position like that. Detective Bad, I'd like to examine the bodies in further detail if possible. What's this? You're not able to form a series with the ways they are? 
I believe an examination of the bodies is vital to finding the perfect evidence, don't you? Hmm. Suppose you do have a point. Well, hurry up and get on with it! Labby. Yes, sir! We've taken enough photos of the scene, sir! And there you have it. Do you not approve? Of course not. What? Investigation of a crime scene is the work of a detective, so don't touch a thing. Hey, big fella, turn over the bodies for me, will ya? Uh, okay. Please forgive me, Mr. Faraday, sir. Gumshoe, Gumshoe, do not get emotionally involved. Remember, you're a detective. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Then, so we've got a stab wound here, and something here. I want to know what this is. There's something in his breast pocket. It's a fountain pen. Nice nib. Hey, you know, I always keep a pencil behind my ear. It's because Detective Bad is always telling me, you should always write your name on everything you own. Yes, somehow you do strike me as quite a forgetful individual. All right, we got panic. Okay, well then we can combine those two pieces of logic, at least that's pretty easy. It looks like Mr. Faraday was stabbed with this knife that Mr. Rell is holding. Youch! What's wrong, detective? My stomach started to hurt from just thinking about being stabbed. Just keep your mind on the case, all right? Shot in the chest. It takes some guts to fire a gun in a courthouse. I mean, I've been a detective for a whole week and I still haven't fired a single round yet. There aren't any burn marks on his clothes. That must mean... Wait, wait, burn marks? A round grows very hot as it is discharged from a firearm. Therefore, burn marks are usually left when a shot is fired from point-blank range. Ergo, Mr. Rell must have been shot from at least a yard or two away. Damn, so how'd they fall on each other? You sure do know a bunch of neat stuff for your age, pal. Apparently, this detective has as much common knowledge as your everyday marsupial. Mr. Faraday is holding a gun in his right hand. That's the one Mr. Rell got blown away by, right? Labby, your answer. Yes, sir! We found that the ballistic markings do match that gun! Oh, um, ballistic markings are, um are the figurative fingerprints a gun leaves on a bullet when fired. Every gun leaves its own unique ballistic markings. Therefore, by looking at the markings on a bullet, you can tell which gun it came from. Yeah, that's it. Uh, of course, I already knew all about that, pal. Maybe you'd be better off going back to the academy. Yeah, come on, sir. Cut me some slack, will ya? So the bullet that was fired from this gun is what felled Mr. Rell. Did we look at this already? I don't think so. There's a knife wound in his chest here, see? Oh, I wonder if the wound matches the knife Mr. Rell is holding. Labby. Yes, sir! Verifying now, sir! Make it quick. From the look of things, one could deduce that the knife Mr. Rell is holding is what killed Mr. Faraday. Let us now try to understand how the two men died. First, Mr. Faraday took the gun and the knife out from today's trial evidence. Then, he aimed the gun at Mr. Rell and fired. However, Mr. Rell managed to grab the knife and counter Mr. Faraday while being shot. Then, the two men fell together where they stood. That is my theory, in any case. What a crazy way to go! Still, something about that explanation just doesn't seem right. Hmm, I believe I now have a firmer grasp on what happened here. Well, that's good. Now we can get some logic going. That splotch on Mr. Faraday's hand. I wonder if it might be the ink from his fountain pen. Oh, let's ask the lab guy. Detective Gumshoe! I confirm that the substance on Mr. Faraday's hand is the ink from his fountain pen! I see. Good work. Ah, you know, I've always wanted to say that, even if it was just one time in my life. If Mr. Faraday wrote with his fountain pen in his left hand... I think it's fair to assume he was left-handed. 
It appears that Mr. Faraday's pen is very important to our case as well. Okay, if you say so, pal. God, they are just always gonna keep doing this right hand, left hand stuff. Uh, he's holding it in his right hand, the gun. You can see just from that thing, so like, uh, yeah, this is a staged crime scene. I guess there's not much left to investigate, huh? They really did kill each other. No, we can't conclude that quite yet. There's still something I find very peculiar here. The theory that they simply killed one another is too simplistic in this case. In fact, there is actually a contradiction that shows there is another possibility. No way, pal, really? Hmm, I suppose I will just have to show you the conflict in this crime scene. All right, deduce there with, uh, uh, the fountain pen. Now we come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of, and it is this. Mr. Faraday used his left hand to write with his fountain pen. Ergo, he is left-handed. And yet, the handgun is in his right hand. Don't you find it odd that the left-handed Mr. Faraday would hold the gun in his right hand? That, lady and gentlemen, is the great contradiction haunting this crime scene. Hey, you're right, pal. That does seem kind of strange. But how could something like that happen? The facts add up to one conclusion and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand after he died. Someone else? Plastic bags scattered on the floor and a gun in the wrong hand. I sense the presence of a shadowy figure behind this case. A person of vile intent who is serious about keeping the truth from us. Damn, I wonder if it was Detective Bad. He seems like he's bad. Here's the autopsy report. It is probable that Mr. Velsh survived for a short time after he was shot. However, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously from his stabbing. Interesting. It looks like we now know everything we need to know about this case. Are you sure we know everything? Of course! The incident began with Mr. Faraday attempting to get his revenge. The prosecutor went into a rage from being accused and tried to kill the defendant. But the defendant fought back and they ended up killing each other. It's all very clear and simple. There's absolutely no margin for doubt. Do you really believe that to be the truth? Ha! Are you saying that just because I figured out the truth before you, that you don't want to believe it's true? Nah. It's all right. If you disagree with my arguments, then prove me wrong. Well, if there are any contradictions to be found, that is. Don't worry, I will. Mm, damn. And that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at some burned albino, and I will see you guys next time.